guys, welcome to part three of a four part series looking at various what if questions. Today's question is what if hell is real? Let's pray to open. Dear God, show us how we can light the way to heaven to save our loved ones from eternal separation from you. In Jesus name, amen. One of the many reasons people do not wish to believe the Bible is because believing that the Bible is true means believing some hard truths. It means accepting the truth that we are all sinners. We are born flawed and selfish and there's nothing we can do about it. It means that we are unable to save ourselves. It means that if we do not accept Jesus as our savior, we'll be lost in eternity separated from God. It means believing a place called hell is real. The word hell conjures up many images. People think of a cave-like place filled with lava and fire pits and little devils in red suits with horns and pitchforks. There's no biblical basis for this cartoon-like image of hell. But we do know a few things based on scripture. Hell is a place with no relief. It's a place where there's no comfort and endless torment. It's a miserable place because hell means complete and total separation from the God who loves us. Not a pleasant prospect, I know, but it's as real as the earth we live on and the heaven we aspire to reach. Jesus himself spoke about hell in one of his parables. He tells us that when we die, we will be judged and those who do not give their lives to him will be separated and sent away. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46 says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. This is no good Samaritan story and it's no prodigal son. It's not a parable we like to read or preach, but it's no less important than those parables with happy endings. Jesus tells us that those who do not believe, who do not live according to the way he taught us, will be sent away, forced to spend eternity separated from God. The existence of hell is a big stumbling block for many people in and out of the church. Why does hell have to exist? If God is truly loving, why would he even make hell? The answer is found in the great tragedy of the Bible. Hell exists because we are sinners, because of sin. 
God was forced to make a place completely separated from himself. Our sin makes us imperfect. And the Bible tells us that anything imperfect cannot stand in the presence of God. Hell exists because of sin. But here's the good news of the Bible. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sins, to die so that he could forgive our sins and welcome us like the sheep into his fold. Yes, hell is real, but so is heaven. And Jesus has made the path clear to heaven. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. Knowing hell is real makes the choice to accept Jesus clear for us, but it should also make us more compassionate, more loving and more tender to the world that doesn't know Christ. The only way people will be saved from hell is if we tell them. It's up to us to show people that Jesus loves them. And this parable teaches us how we do that. We feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, we give shelter to the homeless, we show love and compassion to everyone without qualification and without judgment. Jesus is counting on us to share the good news that no one needs to go to hell. He calls us to pray for the world and to love the way he loved us. Jesus loved to the point of laying down his own life so that no one would have to go to hell. It's up to us to continue that good work and to light the way away from hell toward the light of heaven. There's an old song that says, they will know we are Christians by our love. That's the way Jesus wants us to win people over. The gospel is not a story of fear, but of compassion. Yes, hell is real. Yes, our sin has condemned us to hell. But thank God he sent his son, Jesus, to love us and save us from judgment. Let Jesus be your role model. Let his light shine in your heart. Let the world know Jesus can save them by the love you show them. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, give us compassion for others so we will speak out and share the good news of heaven with our friends and classmates. In Jesus' name. Amen.